Let's make and rig stylized eyes in Blender. This method relies on the UV wrap modifier, which can non-destructively offset the transforms of a mesh's UVs using objects or bones. This tutorial will be divided into two parts. In the description, you'll find a link to the tutorial file, along with a set of free simple stylized eyes textures compatible with the method. 1. A three-part eye mesh. First thing first, we need an eye. Add a UV sphere. Rotate it by 90 degrees on the x-axis and apply the rotation. Go to the UV editing window. For the method to work correctly, we need the UV island to be at the center of the UV tile. Place a seam on a loop somewhere around the middle of the sphere and unwrap it. Select the biggest island and in the UV vertex panel enter 0.5 for both axes to center it. Scale it up as much as possible. Scale down the other island in a corner, it is useless. If you want to add details to the back of the eye, I'll show you a way later in the part 2 of this tutorial. Duplicate the sphere and delete around half of it. Scale it up ever so slightly, that will be your pupil mesh. Having it as separate geometry will allow us to transform its UVs independently from the iris. If you also want independent hand-painted highlights, duplicate your pupil mesh. Maybe delete a face loop or two and scale it up just enough so it doesn't intersect with the pupil mesh. I am going to join all these meshes together, so I only have one object to deal with, but that's just a preference. Same goes for the material. I prefer to have one single material for all the parts, but having one material per part is also an option. Before joining anything, create for each mesh a vertex group with a corresponding name and assign all vertices to it. These will come in handy for both the shader and the UV wrap modifiers. Two. The material. Let's create a material that is compatible with this method. We'll need at least one texture per part, so three textures. The textures need to look like this, and the image texture node in the material needs to have its extension mode set to extend. It will ensure the texture doesn't start tiling up if you shrink down the UVs too much. There can't be any other used UV island on the texture. The iris one needs to be completely filled by the eyeball color. The pupil and highlights textures will be used as masks and should be black and white. If for any reason you want to have details painted on the pupil or highlights, you'll need to either store the mask in the alpha channel or make another texture. You can download pre-made textures for free with the link in the description. If the downloaded textures end up rotated in a bad way on your eye, just rotate the UV island until you get the rotation you want. Once you've either painted or downloaded your textures, you can join the meshes together and make the material. Delete the principled BSDF and add an image texture node with its extension mode set to extend. Duplicate it twice or more depending on your needs and import all of your textures. There is a problem though. The UVs of the different parts are overlapping, which means we can't simply use the texture masks as is. How do we work around this? Udims don't exactly work well with the UV wrap modifier, at least not in this case. So, we'll instead use vertex groups as masks, thanks to the simplest geonode tree ever. Add a new geonode tree to your eye. Add three named attribute nodes and select your vertex group's name. Plug the attribute output to the group output node. In the modifiers tab, give a different name to the newly created attributes. It has to be different in order to not cause any conflict between them and the vertex groups. Finally, add three attribute nodes to your material. Copy and paste the names of the attributes. They're now black and white masks highlighting each part of the eye. Now, if you plug one into the second input of a mixed color node set to multiply, anything that you plug into the first input will only appear on the corresponding mesh part. We can create functional pupil and highlight masks that way. Now, we need to add a transparent shader to the whole thing. We also need to combine the masks to create one single alpha mask. Using mix node set to add with a factor of 1, we can superpose all the masks. Plug the final node into the factor of a mix shader node. Since the parts we want to hide appear black on the mask, meaning they have a value of zero. We'll have to plug the transparent shader into the first input of the mix shader. Finally, in the material settings in EV, change the blend and shadow mode to alpha clip. Alpha hashed is too noisy, 
and Alpha Blend isn't really compatible. Now that's all done, let's add the colors. Add a mix color node. Plug the iris texture into the first input and the pupil mask into the factor. You can choose the color of the pupil in the second input or use a detailed pupil texture if you have one. Duplicate the mix node. Plug the previous mix node into the first input and the highlights mask into the factor. Same thing, you can choose the color of the highlights in the second input. Voila, let's organize the shader a bit better. We'll also add a small tune shader to get some shadows. To create a small tune shader real quick, add a diffuse shader, plug it into a shader to RGB node, and plug this into a color ramp. Add a HSV node to make the shadow color, plug the iris texture into it, reduce the value and crank up the saturation. Plug the color ramp into the factor of a mixed color node, plug the shadow color into the first input and the base color into the second. Plug the mixed color where the iris texture was previously plugged. That way only the iris will be affected by the light. This is my preferred way to do this, but there are plenty other ways. Our eye's huge at the moment and that'll be hard to lit correctly. Let's scale it down and apply the new scale. Don't forget to add a light to the scene. Finally, bring the handles of the color ramp closer to each other. The closer, the sharper your shadows will get. 3. The rig. We can make the rig at last. Add a UV wrap modifier to the eye. The UV center is the coordinates on the UV tile that will act as the origin and pivot point of the UVs. 0.5 is what we need. The object from location, rotation and scale corresponds to the rest most transforms of the UVs. The object to transforms will define the offset of the UVs. You can also offset the UVs using the transform panel of the modifier, but I personally won't. I prefer to control it with bones, that way it can be implemented into a whole character rig. Create an armature. In the viewport display settings, tick in front so that it is easier to see. Since most of the bones will superpose, set the display mode as bendy bones. It'll make it easier to select them later on. The first bone will be our object from. It is a mechanism bone. Let's call it MCHUV. Scale it down. Using CTRL plus ALT plus SHIFT plus S. Make it thinner. Its position doesn't matter. Duplicate it. Scale the new bone up and make it thinner. This one will drive the scale, and why not other transforms of our iris? Rename it something like MCHUV iris. In the UV wrap modifier, set up the targets. Choose the iris group as the vertex group, so that it only affects the iris part. Now if you scale the MCHUV iris bone, the iris should follow. We'll need to repeat these steps for each part. Each time you duplicate the bone, make it even thinner. You can pair it the MCHUV pupil bone to the MCHUV iris bone. Unless you don't want the pupil to automatically scale with the iris. You should end up with a little tower of bones and three UV wrap modifiers, each using a different MCH bone as the object to and a corresponding vertex group. All the bones must share the same position. If you have two eyes like most of the time with or without a mirror modifier and want to rig them independently, You'll need to add a dot L suffix to all of your bones to be able to symmetrize them. Any mirror modifier will need to be at the very top of the modifier stack. You'll also need to split your vertex groups into a left group and a right group, and use a UV wrap modifier per part and per side, so six modifiers in total. You can technically use the modifiers to translate the iris, pupils and highlights, but I personally don't like it. It can introduce distortion and artifacts. Plus, in a whole character rig, it couldn't be used to move eyelids along with the eye. So I prefer to use another bone. Add a bone at the center of the eye. 
enabling snapping to vertices. Move the tail to the center vertex of the pole. Call this one def I. Hitting Shift N, choose Global Plus at Axis to align the bone's roll with world space. This will make it easier to animate, especially when using the graph editor. Duplicate it, scale it down, and make it thicker. This one will be the def highlights and will allow us to move the highlights independently from the eye. Duplicate it again and move it forward on the y-axis. This one is the eye controller. Duplicate the eye controller, scale it down, and make it thicker. This one is the highlights controller. In pose mode, let's select the eye controller, then the def eye bone. Hitting CTRL plus Shift plus C, add a damped track constraint. Your def eye bone is now automatically aiming at the controller bone. Do the same for the highlights bones. If needed, symmetrize all the new bones. Time to bind the eye to the armature. Select all the bones except the def bones. In the bone data panel, out click on the deform box. It will disable deformation for all the selected bones and prevent them from generating vertex groups later. Parent the eye to the rig using the with empty group option. Only the deaf bones will generate vertex groups. In edit mode, assign the highlights vertices to the deaf highlights group and the rest to the deaf eye group. Back to the rig. If you want the highlights to follow the eye, add a copy location constraint to the highlights controller targeting the eye controller. Set both the owner and target spaces to local space and tick offset, so that you can still manually move the bone. By tweaking the factor, you can control how much the highlights will follow. I like to set it at 0.5. Symmetrize if needed, and you're done. The rig is now functional. In the second part of this tutorial, we'll see how to organize it better with drivers, customs properties, and custom shapes, as well as how to deal with other types of eye designs. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you found this video helpful.